Hello everybody, welcome to another Photoshop CS6 tutorial. I'm your host, Buddy Blackford. In the next couple tutorials that we're gonna start going through, I'm gonna start discussing paths and the different vector tools that Photoshop has added to CS6. But before that, we need to have a good foundation of, of what a vector image is and how that compares to a raster image and the limitations of using vectors and paths and stuff like that in Photoshop. So let's get started. First of all, Photoshop is a hybrid program, but it mainly deals with pixels. Now, pixels are attributed to raster images. So whenever you hear something like that, like do you want to convert this to a raster image or something like that in Photoshop, that basically means do you want to convert this to pixels. And when you're using a vector, vector images, which are mainly used in programs like Adobe Illustrator, those vectors are basically paths that are computed with mathematical computations and things like that that are beyond my like knowledge. Um, I'm not really sure how they're actually made, but there are compute, uh, math mathematical computations that happen that keep the edges crisp and they're scalable and everything like that. So I'm gonna show you some examples of what uh, raster and vector images are so you have a good understanding and can follow along in the next tutorials a little bit better with a better understanding. And I'm just gonna treat this like um, some of you may not know what any of this even means. So that's how I'm gonna go about this in the next bit. So right now I have up or I have a uh, um, what's that called? Imported an EPS file, which is a vector format, into Photoshop. Now, when you import it, it's not going to really be a vector. It's just going to show up as a layer. And when you have something in a layer, it's a raster image, for the most part, unless you're dealing with smart objects. And this is not a smart object. So you can tell when I zoom in. I'm going to zoom in on this coconut here. You can see that the edges here are blocky and pixelated, as you would say. That's because they're using pixels, of course. If I zoom in even more, you can see the different squares that make up the pixels, and each one of these squares is a pixel. And you can see that edges are pixelated. That's why it looks like that. Now, when you deal with a vector image, if I go into Adobe Illustrator, and I go to zoom in on the same coconut here, I'm zooming in, this is 600%, here's 1,200%. You can see that the edges are still crisp and fairly nice and everything like that. So this is what a vector image does. I'm able to scale this image up and down and the edges will still be crisp. Another feature of vector images, if I go ahead and click on my selection tool here, is that they have paths. And when I hover over these paths, they get highlighted by this dark uh, line here. And you can see that this image is made up of paths instead of um, pixels. So that's another feature of vector images. Now Photoshop has the ability to deal with some of the vec uh, with vector images, but it's not like the best tool. So if you're really wanting to make up some vector images that are really nice and everything, use Adobe Illustrator. But if you just need to make something like a square or you have um, something within your shape tools that you wanna make a vector image, go ahead and you can do that. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna oh, just open up a blank space here. I'm just gonna show you something real quick. Go ahead to your, um, your shape tools over here. You can make something like the custom shape tool. And then I'll have something like, go ahead and pick something here. And what do I wanna pick? I'll pick something like this light bulb, I guess. Or this teardrop is pretty simple, I'll pick that. And I have the, you're able to choose a fill color. You can do a fill gradient or pattern, which you weren't able to do in CS6. And then I can make a stroke on it if I want. So I'll just do a black stroke and a blue thing there, a, a blue fill, I mean. And if I draw this out, 
you can see now that I have a smart object. You can tell by this right here, the uh, little symbol here, that's a smart object. Now, the good thing about this is that I can scale this with a free transform, and it's not going to get all blurry on me if I just keep on scaling this up like a vector image would, or like a raster image would, I mean. Um, you can see that it's not perfect, and it's not like super nice like in Adobe Illustrator, which is why I recommend to you to use Adobe Illustrator if you really want to work with paths but our paths and vectors but that's a, a brief introduction on to what these are, are what this means and what's the difference between raster and vector images so remember raster images are pixel based and vector images are path based um, that have mathematical computations that keep them nice and crisp when you uh, scale them up or scale them down so thanks for watching this tutorial and hopefully you guys get a good foundation and can follow along better in the next few tutorials where we're going to start discussing paths. So thanks for watching everybody and you guys have a good day.